Hello there, Jose Rodriguez here again. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a slightly different type of image printing. I know a lot of you do photographic prints. Well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to print to CDs and DVDs. Of course, you require a special type of discs that have a printable surface. You require a printer that will be able to print on a disc and software that would allow you to send images to that type format. Well, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate what I do. I have a side business that I develop and sell instructional DVDs about certain hobbies that I am involved in. And I sell these through a special company that deals with that type of uh, material. Anyway, so here is a sample of one of my DVDs. And you can see that it is printed on the surface. I create the artwork and then I use software that I will demonstrate in a little bit to send it to the disc printer. In my case, since I am doing so many of these at a time, I will sometimes do 50 discs at a time. I need to have a duplicator. Now, this is not a very fancy duplicator. I have one here that has been serving me for the last I would say 10 years, 10, 13 years, and has sort of had it now. The operating system has to be reinitialized. I cannot find anyone that will service this model anymore. So I went ahead and purchased a new one. And this is a far better machine anyway. It has an internal 1.5 terabyte drive that I can then load ISO images of my projects to it. And then I can literally access them through a LCD monitor, load that image up, fill up the base with CDs, press enter, and it will burn them. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. While it's booting, I'll tell you that I am using a Primera Bravo 2 printer. It's not the disc producer, it's just a basic printer. On it, I am using the equivalent Lexmark 16 in number 26 cartridges. In order for me to be able to use those, I have been able to create copies of the barcode that the printer will read. Those barcodes are basically in the form of a very fragile decal in the original Primera cards, which are very, very expensive. I've been getting the Lexmark cards from eBay probably around eight to $12 a piece instead of the almost 50 plus dollars for the Primera cards. Okay, so it has booted up. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into the LCD and uh, proceed to load an image. Okay, so as you can see, this is a copy, stars, duplicator. I got it through Amazon.com for about $4.50. It has five burning bays, one read bay. Now you can do things uh, the easy way. You can insert your original here and directly copy onto the other five drives or however number of drives you want to load. If you want to do 15 of them, 10 or 15 of them, you would have to copy that disk every single time. So what I'd rather do is load images. Now this has a USB 3 port in the back so I can directly plug that into my computer and it will open up on the computer as a drive onto which I can then just simply transfer or drag over any of my ISOs and it will save them according to name and then I can actually look them up in the LCD. And to do so you have to go down this right now is set for my last project that I did. I'm going to go ahead and go to Hard Drive Manager and select the image. And it will load my images. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, pick an image. And let's see, what should we do? As you can see, everything has to do with machining. That is my hobby and also business. So we'll do Tech Microwave Basic. And it could be any actual image. So now we have chosen the image. I'm going to go ahead and escape. Go back to that original menu and go up to the top to copy. Now all I have to do is insert a number of CDs, however many I want. We'll just go ahead and do one because I don't need to really do too many of those. I have quite a few in stock, but I'll just do this as an example for you all. And it's going to recognize that there's a disk that needs to be burned onto number one and enter. It's going to search the other drives. As you can see, it didn't find anything. 
So it's going to burn directly from that drive, that internal hard drive. It's going to open up that ISO image and burn it in the proper manner so that any DVD player can recognize it. And once it writes the lead in, it's going to proceed to um, burn it. And then the progress in percents will be shown right here. This is progress in megabytes. This is progress in percent. So I'll go ahead and pause it. It takes approximately five minutes. I don't want to bore you. So I will pause it and then we'll come back. Okay, we are at about 92, 93%, almost done. As you can see, the megabyte count is nearing its final total of 4336. Once it reaches that, it's going to write the lead out and then it will certify the disk, whether it failed or whether it's a clean burn and it will eject it. Okay, so it was it has passed and we have the burnt disk. Now let's go ahead and print our image onto it. I'm going to go ahead and show you the software that I use, SureThing CD Labeler Deluxe 5. So I'm going to go ahead and close this particular one. We will open up. I have all of my templates saved. And we're looking for Tag Basic. And we'll load it. And now that's what we will print to the Primera printer with. But before I do that, I need to make sure that the nozzles on the printhead are clean. Now, Primera printers utilize basically a rebadged Lexmark 26 and 16. And these have built-in thermal heads on them. Each card has its own printhead. So it's really recommended that you check it, run a nozzle check on it to make sure that everything is clean. And then from that, once you know that all the three colors in black are firing properly, then go ahead and print your image. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna move the camera over to the printer. We'll go ahead and run the uh, nozzle check. Okay, our printer is on. Running the nozzle check is quite simple. I just use a uh, DVD that did not work out. I either committed an error when I was burning it, and I use this to print my nozzles on. Basically what I need to have is all colors firing. Now I need to close the lid because there is a infrared sensor inside and if I have the lid open not only will the printer not work because there's also a micro sensor on the lid. Now I could block that but there's no need to do so. You need to have this darkened tinted cover on, on it so that the infrared sensor can properly read that barcode and I'll show you what those look like in the end. Okay basically what I did I went over to my printing preferences for the printer and I chose to run a purge. Once it loads it and it reads the card and authenticates it, then I can open up the lid and you'll be able to see. So it's actually sensing whether there's any more disks in the right side where you load the blanks. See that red beam? That's the infrared sensor. So it has sensed that this is indeed a authentic card and it's proceeding to do the now I overlap them to get as many purges out of a single disc because once they're full, I need to throw them out. And you can see that my, the magenta is not firing completely. So I need to just run another one. We'll let it finish and we'll come back. Now what I had to do in this case is to remove the cart and you on the driver you set it for a cartridge change basically what I did was wipe the bottom with a clean paper towel and just warm water you could use Windex also and that will clean any blockages that may exist on the nozzles and this is the print head by the way see that little tiny copper foil on the bottom of the cart these, these cartridges do not really sit and seal themselves on the so-called resting or parking 
sponge. They do not have a purge unit like regular inkjet photo printers do. So often, that's the only way they can uh, be cleaned. Okay, I have cleaned the bottom of the cartridge. I have to rearrange that little decal I told you about, the barcode. It wasn't aligning properly and that's why I was getting a read error when the infrared sensor tried to read the decal. Hopefully this will be fine now and we'll be able to do this last nozzle check. Yep. And we have full magenta, and full yellow, and full cyan. We are good to go. I'm going to go ahead and show you the, the little decal later at the end of this run. I don't want to disrupt anything yet. Okay. We are done with this. Go ahead and give you a close-up of what we are looking for. Similar to the Canon printers, you're looking for a clean stripe of color without any lines in them at all. Here's the actual disc we're going to print on. Load it up. Close the lid. I will send the job over to the printer from the software. Okay, the job is spooling. I have this uh, software set up so that it prints the whole face of these print to the hub type discs. Otherwise you would have like a, I think it's a 43 millimeter diameter blank area in the center. We don't want these. That's the advantage of using the full, full face type printable CDs. Now once it senses the decal, I'll go ahead and open the lid and zoom in. You should be able to see how it prints. I'm using 2400 DPI, kind of, sort of, I would not really bet that that's actually what it's doing. But it's a pretty good and sharp image it's able to produce. As you can see, it does a pretty quick job of it. It depends, of course, on the percentage of uh, graphics that you have across the face. I usually try to keep things to a minimum because I want to use as little ink as possible and get as many discs as possible out of a load of ink. Now, remember, you can reload your Lexmark cards. There are lots of videos available on how to do that. And I also have one available on my channel that you can check out if you like. And I would recommend using inks from Arjet Tech. They're very dense and very true to your uh, the originals kind of refrain from using those uh, universal refilling kits that you find at places like you know office max and target any of the office type stores they're just not really good inks not true to the original and that's all there is to it at this point it will come back and pick up the next disc and continue printing depending on the number of prints or copies that you're doing. Okay, and here is the finished disc. There are some discs that are completely glossy surface. They do look beautiful and they're actually waterproof. They're very expensive though. These are fine for what I do. No complaints from any of my customers yet. Okay, I'm going to show you what this little decal or hack looks like. Normally it's located right here on this portion of the cart. And it's a, like I said, it's a very fragile little applique. And it's a, it's a three color type barcode. It has little dots and that is what the sensor is actually reading. Now this little facsimile was created by an individual. It was posted on the Bravo or the Primera Bravo hack site. It's kind of an underground site. But what I will do is to post the PDF file from which you can print these. 
Now notice that you have to cut out these little notches here because there are corresponding notches located here inside the uh, chamber where the cartridge sits and that must be located that allows you to locate the the decal or the barcode correctly in the correct orientation and in other words the actual colored portion bars have to face this way so those little notches allow you to simply insert it in there and it just sits you don't have to tape them to the actual cart so now you can just replace your carts without having to worry about you know replacing that decal and retaping that retaping it onto the cart no need to do that okay so that's it i'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up by saying that this will save you a ton of money for any of you bravo users this will not work for some of the new bravo printers that use a completely different type of cart there are other avenues for you to save money with those but not for this this only works for the printers that utilize the black number 16 lexmar equivalent or the number 26 color lexmar equivalent okay I will have the link for a download for my PDF file. It contains the black decals or barcodes as well as the color ones. You must print them. This is a must. Listen carefully. You must print them using a pigment-based printer. Any of the Epson pigment-based printers will work. And print them on matte heavyweight paper. And do not resize them. Print them as they appear on the PDF. And then you trim a pair of them out, cut out those little notches, insert them into the cavity so that the barcode is in this direction and facing down. Of course, the sensor is located here. So the sensor has to be able to read that barcode. All right. If you like this sort of video, please click on the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe. I will have a lot more content similar to this utilizing many other printers and uh, until the next time bye bye happy printing